Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture number 15 of the course on consumer psychology. What we have been doing up till now is we have been dwelling into section 2 of this course. So as I was saying, uh, this course has two sections into it. The first section is more about studying idea of consumer behavior, what is consumer behavior and we dwelt upon things like consumer decision process through the EKB model. So outlining basically what happens in consumer behavior and what is consumer decision process, how does the consumer makes decision into the marketplace. Section number 2, basic psychological factors and how these psychological factors shape the behavior of consumer, the actions of consumer into the marketplace and what role do the factors have in terms of People buy product benefits, people buy benefits into the marketplace. So they spend in cost, they dwell in risks and they buy benefit. So the idea is buying benefits. Now in this second section, we started off by looking at psychological factors related to perception. So both stimuli related perceptual factors which could be color, taste, form, shape those kind of factors and how these factors actually influence the behavior of consumer into the marketplace. We also looked at perceiver factors which means that we looked at consumer factors which actually shape the behavior of consumer into the marketplace and where we discussed things like absolute threshold, differential threshold, the concept of Lyman, the concept of Weber's law generalization principle, discrimination principle and this kind of factors. Further to it we added on the process of categorization or organization which are very basic to perception and how these factors influence the behavior of consumers in any interaction that is having into the marketplace. We looked at perceptions of price, perceptions of quality and, and uh, service, perceptions of social affairs and some other perceptions and how these factors basically influence or direct the behavior of consumer and marketers into the marketplace. Basically how do they govern this exchange, the transaction which is happening into the marketplace between the consumer and the marketer. In next section we looked at factors related to memory. So how is information retained, how is information grabbed and how is information processed and retrieved in the consumer mind and how these factors influence the behavior of consumer into the marketplace and how these factors influence marketer action or marketer behavior into the marketplace where consumer marketer transactions are going on. Further to it, we looked at learning factors, so associative and non-associative forms of learning and how these forms of learning influence the behavior of both the consumer and the marketer in any transactions which is going on into the marketplace. Last lecture was focused on an interesting component on psychology which is motivation and so what we looked there is what is motivation, what is the internal drive, how do we define it and how does this drive control and process consumer behavior, the behavior of individuals and marketers into the marketplace. What factors are there which drive or which explain motivation related impact on the behavior of consumer and marketer. So that was what we did in the last lecture and in this lecture 
which is lecture number 15. What we are going to do is we are going to look at two interesting other factors, psychological factors, which drive the behavior of consumers into the marketplace. And so, these behaviors are emotion and mood. In addition to this, we will also look into product involvement or involvement with transactions, products, services and how these involvement direct modulate the behavior of consumer and marketers into the marketplace. So, how this factors psychological factor of emotion and mood and involvement play out in this consumer behavior process. So, before we start dwelling into or understanding emotion effects or role of emotion on consumer action in the context of the marketplace. Let us start by explaining what is emotion, a little bit of information of what is emotion and further it with some more information of how it differs from mood. So, what is the primary difference? So, let us start our lecture number 15 which is the present lecture and define what is emotion and mood. So, let us start with first what are emotions. What are emotions and what is the need for emotion, the psychological background behind it and what is mood and how does mood and emotions differ from each other. So, emotions has been defined as a multi component episode that creates the readiness to act. So, emotion definition of emotion says it is a multi component episode which means that emotion is not a single component, it is not a single process, it is a multi process episode that does what? So, multi process episode, multi process processing that in it turns creates a readiness to act, a drive to act that is what emotion is all about. And emotions generally are very pointed. Now, when I say pointed what does it mean? It is very clearly defined, it has a very clear input, it has a very clear throughput and it is a very clear output. Emotions are very clear in comparison to moods, but we will come to that when we explain the difference between emotion and mood. And so, briefly explaining how emotion starts or so how does emotion set in, how does emotion start or the process of emotion sets in. So, generally any emotion episode since it is if it is a multi component episode, how do I define emotion? Any emotion starts with something called a person environment interaction. So, the first thing in an emotion, the first step to be followed in an emotion is a person interaction environment, which basically means that a person has to get involved with an environment for an emotion to get created. Let us take an example that you are passing through a country fair there is loud noises, there are people laughing, there is all kind of happiness around the fair, you are moving through it, you are moving towards this fair or across this fair. This is person environment interaction, but if you do not decide to interact with this environment, if you decide not to go into this fair, the festive mood, the happiness that the festivity, the excitement, the elation that this environment or the fair has will not be embedded onto you, you not feel that until and unless you decide, you decide to interact with this environment, you decide to go into this environment. So, the first step in emotion is called the person environment interaction, the person has to interact with the environment. The second process is called cognitive appraisal. So, 
So, once you decide to interact with the fair, to interact with the fun movement in the fair, to interact with things which are going into the fair, you appraise the situation. What is appraisal? Appraisal is taking stock of, understanding, deciphering or uh, breaking it down. That is appraisal, understanding a process. So, you try to understand, you try to uh, make meaning out of what is happening. As soon as you appraise, as soon as you take stock of, as soon as you try to understand what is happening into the fair, as soon as you appraise, when you have interacted with the fair and you appraise what is happening, the process of emotion starts. You start feeling with it, you appraise it that this is happy, this is sad, this is a, this is a fair that is going on. That appraisal has to be there, that appraisal, that realization has to be there, that this is a fair and some kind of schema has to come out from, from your past experience which tells you how fairs are like, fairs are fun, fairs are good, fairs are funny, fairs are enjoyment and that kind of a schema has to come out of you and so that is what the next step is. So, cognitive appraisal, until unless a cognitive appraisal has been done, emotions will not set in. So, once you try to or you start to interact with an environment and you have a cognitive appraisal, you make meaning of that, you appraise the situation, you make meaning of the situation. A multi-process processing starts which finally leads to emotional behavior. An emotional response happens and so this is what is called the emotional response. And so what is this emotional response all about? This emotional response will start with subjective evaluation. So, the first step after cognitive appraisal is subjective evaluation. Different people have different ideas about fair, different experiences of fair and so how the experience that you have bringing that experience or the fair to from your memory to, to the present is what is called subjective experience. You decide or you look into your memory and past experiences and decide what fairs are. Leading to that there will be something called thought and action tendencies. And so, what is thought and action tendencies? Once you come to know that this situation, you appraise the situation and this situation from your memory suggests that certain kind of experience or relieves, brings to brings forth into your memory certain kind of experiences, it also tells you how should you behave in this situation. So, in a fair, if you felt pleasant and you behaved in a certain manner, for example, you talked loudly, you smiled at people, you talked to strangers and all those kind of behavior that you did in a happy experience in the past, in a fair, those experiences will be activated and those are called thought and action tendencies. So, those thoughts and action tendencies are actually evoked. And because of these thoughts and action tendencies, an internal bodily change starts happening and because of the thought and action tendencies, because you start doing something, because you know that the affair is in a certain way and you did in certain things in a fair, certain changes, bodily changes start appearing. So, for example, you might see that uh, hairs on your hand, uh, they, they, they get excited or your eyes flush or your mouth opens in a, in a particular manner. So, bodily changes happens, the sympathetic system gets activated, you get heightened. If, if you had a positive experience, if you had a negative experience, the opposite starts happening and that happens and because of that, this internal bodily changes, the facial expression also changes. So, facial expression also is changed because of this and this is what is typically called the emotional response. So, the generation of subjective evaluation to thought and extent tendencies to internal bodily changes and to facial expression change is what is the emotional response. And because of this emotional response, there is a behavioral response which follows it. A behavioral response to emotion. For example, 
if this is a positive feeling and you start thinking about those action tendencies that you did in those positive feelings and the internal bodily changes become excited and a facial expression change according to it. You become excited in a fair and you start feeling positive and you also start dancing, singing, joking around, doing all kinds of acts which represents excitement. That kind of an act or that kind of a behavior is shown, that kind of behavior is inputted, that kind of behavior is uh, rather outputted you output you perform that behavior and so this whole pattern here is what is called the emotional response or what an emotion is all about and that is how an emotional or uh, uh, really works and so basically generally speaking the emotion has three components a physiological component How you feel when you are emotional is the physiological component. The dilating of the pupil, the opening of the mouth, the flushing of the cheek, all these are physiological component. The rushing of blood to extremities, all are physiological component. There is a subjective component. of emotion and what is the subjective component? The subjective component of emotion is your thinking process. What comes to mind? What kind of thoughts come to mind when you feel emotional? What kind of feelings generate? What kind of experiences you remember? All are subjective and then there is a expensive behavior. So, once these two things set in, uh, behavior which is in match with this emotion is demonstrated. So, you feel happy, you start jumping up and down, you feel sad, you start crying, lying out somewhere else and that is the kind of behavior which is there. So, this is what emotion is all about. It is a multi component model, but basically having three parts into it, a subjective part, a physiological component and a behavior part. Now, since we are here explaining emotion, let us also differentiate between what is a mood and what is an emotion what is the difference between mood and emotion because we will need this further on. When we discuss further the role of mood in consumer behavior, we will need to differentiate what is emotion and what is mood. So, first of all emotions are clear cause events. When emotion happens, the cause is very clear. You know what causes it. You get a gift, you are happy, the cause is clear you get beating, you are sad, you are crying, cause is clear, whereas in mood the cause is unclear. You have often seen people saying that I do not know why my mood is bad, I am suffering from bad mood, I do not know why my mood is good and so that kind of statement. So, there is no clear cause to it. Emotions are brief episodes which basically means that emotions start, peak and fall down. That is how emotion works. So, emotions are it starts, it peaks very quickly and it falls down very quickly. Whereas, mood are longer duration episode. So, emotions can la last from 30 seconds to 1 minute to 2 minutes to 5 minutes to 10 minutes maximum. Whereas, mood can last for longer days. That is why you have something called the mood disorders. You have called the unipolar and bipolar mood disorders because then there is if there is bipolar then it swings between the elation and depression and it is unipolar then it is fixed on to one of these uh, one of these poles and so moods are longer duration uh, things they stay for longer periods and longer duration and it is a single component factor and it is a multi component whereas when you see emotion you see many components, you see the physiological change, you see the subjective change, you see the behavior whereas, with mood we do not see all these factors occurring together. So, this is basically what is emotion and what is mood and what is the distinction between them. So, let us move forward and have a look at how does this emotion and mood determine the behavior of consumer and marketers into the marketplace, what role do they have to play into the marketplace. So, Emotions are affective responses 
that are reflected that reflects the activation of deep seated and value laden belief within the consumer. What are emotions? These are effective responses. So, you feel positive, negative, happy, sad and so on and so forth which reflects what? The activation of deep seated value laden. So, generally there are some value factors because of which emotions are generated. For example, let us take the statement that lying is crime. Now, this is a belief. or cheating is crime. This is a belief, this is a deep seated belief, but this cheating is crime, this belief can lead to different kind of emotions. If you have been robbed, you feel angry, but if you believe that cheating, somebody cheated for sustaining himself, you do not feel that angry, a different emotion altogether, sympathy is the emotion which gets generated. So, if you are cheated and you believe the cheating is crime, you feel angry, you feel aggressive towards that person. But if cheating, you see someone cheating for surviving, let us say a small boy who is a beggar takes, cheats someone, gets some money and he is food out of it for his prime survival, sympathy is the emotion that you feel out of it. So, belief is cheating is crime, but the emotion that is generated out of it is can be different. So, the evocation of a belief generates a corresponding emotion and that is what we have been saying. This generation of belief that cheating is crime that leads to different kind of emotions and depending on different different situations, these emotions will be different. Different emotions are triggered by different beliefs and that is what we have been saying. So, how consumers experience emotions? What is the way in which consumer experience emotions into the marketplace? People purchase and use products and services in order to experience certain emotional states or to achieve certain emotional goals. When you purchase a product, when you use a service, the use of it, the purchase of it leads to either satisfaction or dissatisfaction and this satisfaction or dissatisfaction will lead to emotional outputs. If it is satisfaction, you are happy, if it is dissatisfaction, you uh, may be angry, you may be disgusted, so on and so forth. And so, basically using this products and purchases and services and the whole process, the whole experience of it creates different emotional states in the consumer's mind and the marketer's mind. So, emotions and post purchase evaluation. So, how does emotions affect post purchase evaluation? So, basically how does emotion then uh, is, is generated or how is emotion uh, generated in the marketplace? So, it is basically dependent on what kind of experience you have. So, if you have used a product and the use of that product has actually helped you in some way, you are satisfied with it, you feel happy about that product, you feel uh, excited about that product and you have positive feeling, positive effect. But if a particular product has failed you in certain way, that leads to dissatisfaction and that can be the emotion which is generated there. So, output of how these experiences are is what is emotion or how emotion is affecting the consumer's mind in the marketplace. So, emotions and post purchase evaluation, emotions play an important role in determining the extent of satisfaction and dissatisfaction with purchase products and services. If you are not satisfied with a product in the marketplace, use of product or service in the marketplace, it is generally dissatisfaction, right and so or you feel angry towards it and you, you, you so you would come to know that anger and dissatisfaction, so if a, if a product so, this post purchase evaluation after using a service, either you get satisfied or dissatisfied and this satisfaction and dissatisfaction happens after you have used a particular product. Now, this dissatisfaction can be in terms of anger or in terms of dissatisfaction. Now, what will anger lead to? Anger will lead you to certain behaviors, for example, shaming or complaining or that kind of a thing, but dissatisfaction and this anger could also be in terms of not only for the marketer, the product manufacturer, it could also be, it could also be in terms of the person himself, he could be angry with himself, but dissatisfaction happens or dissatisfaction leads to a different kind of emotion altogether. The emotion of not fulfilling particular uh, promise that the, that the marketer has done to you. 
right. And so, dissatisfaction and anger are two different ways of expressing uh, failing of a product. Whereas, when you are satisfied with a product, you actually become brand loyal and start using it again and again. So, emotions have a, a great role. If you are satisfied, this will lead to more cost uh, buying of the product, more people involved with the product involved uh, or more brand loyals, but this dissatisfaction of a product can lead to both anger and dissatisfaction as such. If you believe that a product has led to negative disconfirmation, has failed you in a particular way, the kind of feeling that you have will be entirely different than if you feel anger towards a particular uh, manufacturer because of dissatisfaction. So, negative disconfirmation and anger are two basic uh, extremes of the same dissatisfaction that you get out of using a product or out of post purchase evaluation of a product. And what happens if you are dissatisfied? If you are dissatisfied with the product, you will stop using the product, you will bad mouth it, you will complain about it and so many other things we have discussed these. So, if, if you are dissatisfied what happens, what kind of acts that you do if, if you are dissatisfied with the product. So, all those actions come into being, you can complain, you can uh, stop using the product, silently quit or write about it and from word of mouth, you tell family and so on and so forth, you can do a lot of acts out of it. So, another way in which consumers experience emotion into the marketplace is that emotions and which are generated through communication. So, communication messages, advertisements or other uh, messages be it a TV ad, be it is an internet ad, be it in a newspaper, all these ads also create emotion into the people. Emotions play a mediating role in the consumer responses to advertisement. So, how do the consumer, how, what kind of emotions are generated in the consumer that will decide what kind of action, what kind of response does the consumer do to that particular ad. For example, I have written here, I have shown to you how this really works. So, advertisement content, when a particular advertisement is shown to you, for example, you see the Vodafone ad, the small pug in the Vodafone ad and this is cute, this is happy. So, this advertisement content dwells on into cute, happy, positive emotions and due to this certain emotional responses are activated. So, when you see the pug in the Vodafone ad, this creates a happiness, a positive atmosphere around you and because of that emotional response, your attitude towards the ad becomes positive, you start liking the ad, you want to see it again and again and that is the role that advertisement that emotions have because if an ad creates a positive emotion, you like the ad you like to see the ad again and again and because of this your attitude towards the ad becomes positive which leads to the attitude towards the brand become positive and finally, you start liking the brand. So, you li start liking Vodafone, why? Because you like the pug ad, why? Because the pug ad creates a positive emotion in you and so this is the role emotion plays into the marketplace. This is how emotions changes response of consumers into the marketplace. How are emotions induced? How are emotions set in people? How the induction of emotion happens? So, effect effective responses to environmental cues are immediate and automatic. Generally, most emotions are set in automatic. There is no control to it. There is no control switch. When you feel an emotion, it is automatic process. You see something and you feel emotional. There is no thought to it. So, most emotions, they set in in an automatic fashion. Most emotions set into the environment in an automatic process. For example, take the example of color, red color gives a positive warmth feeling in you, whereas blue color creates a comfort, an emotion of comfort, an emotion of relaxing into you, whereas some other color creates different kind of emotions to you. So, emotion generation is an automatic process. Emotions are also generated or it is mediated by how marketers or market people interact with consumers. So, if somebody sees, somebody interacts with a person in the marketplace, so you interact with the salesperson and when you think that the salesperson is ethical, he is helping you in some way, you will be positive towards it, towards him, positive towards the product and positive towards the brand. But if you see the salesperson, when you go to a showroom who is interacting with you is cunning, is not giving a good vibe that is extended on to it creates an emotion the interaction creates an emotion which is negative that 
extends on to the brand as well as the product and the product class not the product class generally but the product that kind of a situation can happen so behavior and emotion so behaviors are also influenced by emotions although we have little influence over the triggering of emotions we can exert some control through our behavior sometimes we overreact to certain situations for example we do wrong attribution of behavior of other people and that leads to a negative emotion and in those times when there is this dissonance when we believe that what we are doing and what we think about that particular person or a marketer or salesperson who we interacted with he has been rude and when we see the reason why he is rude because he has had a bad day we did display our negative attitude towards it uh, negative response toward it in terms of emotional response but when we understand the reason behind it we can do something we can do a behavior to control it in certain certain way and that is what is how we can control some of the emotional effects so what we can do is we can start thinking in positive ways about him or we can maybe say go, go say sorry to him or uh, some other act some behavior purchase something from him that way we will start feeling positive so behaviors are also influenced by emotions so although the emotion excitation the el elicitation of emotion has no control on it but we can do something we can act in a certain way through behavioral response we can do something to control the effects of this emotion or to monitor the effects of these emotions now there are very specific emotions and these emotions are generally used in advertisements for example anger a lot of advertisements use anger you see advertisements of children who are hungry children who are asking for money from you that kind of emotion that kind of an ad creates anger in you and you start developing this anger and start thinking of helping these people so there are ads which create anger in you and this anger is actually fueled or it sometimes create fears so all it ads where it says i see you kind of a thing that creates fear in you and you so start behaving in certain ways in ways aligning to it certain ads also generate fear so fear we have seen humor humor is another interesting thing that most ads tend to focus on or tend to induce fear in comparison to anger is more daunting and it's more immediate responsive now humor is a light emotion and generally it tells you in remembering things in a lighter mood as we as, as we'll see that humor creates a lighter positive mood and this positive mood actually helps you in elaborating a message better and remembering a message better and so humor is one way in which creating humors in ads help consumers recall certain information warmth is a positive feeling is a positive confirmatory feeling that you have when you see an ad for example all those ads which family relationship which emphasizes friendship which is emphasizes social networks all your acquaintances and all that kind of a feeling is warmth and so some ads are used uses this kind of a warmth to promote their products for example all family products family car kind of a thing insurance for the whole family family plan for uh, certain companies that kind of a thing is basically warmth flow another interesting thing is flow flow is your desire to prove yourself your desire to compete to show your skills to uh, give in everything to take the challenge that kind of a thing and flow is certainly used as a measure of emotion to induce consumer responses for example see see you see yourself people uh, put ads where uh, certain actors challenge themselves with certain uh, cars or or certain daring games and so on and so forth and that creates the flow that creates the emotion of flow into people and people buy those things people and generally it works with uh, the younger generations and then there is desire the desire is not the wrong sense in the right sense the desire is wanting of a particular thing the burning after desire feeling the heat of desire that kind of a thing desire is that that emotion where you want something very badly and you can do anything about it so that kind of a desire is created uh, for example ice creams like hagen dazs now this ice cream creates that thing of desire certain coffee brands create this desire where you want to buy it statements like i am so uh, excited i will give anything to buy it kind of a statement expresses the desire so desire is also created as a is used as a measure of emotion for modulating for 
changing behavior of consumers or for influencing uh, consumer action into the marketplace. The next interesting thing to look at in, in, in terms of consumer psychology or in terms of consumer behavior is mood. And so, as we discussed what is mood, it is unclear fact, unclear uh, act which stays for longer duration of time and has no specific cause. So, what is the role of mood in the marketplace? So, what is mood? It is an effective state right? that is general and pervasive. It has no clear act, no clear stimulus to look at and it is pervasive as it extends for a longer period of time. Moods are much less intense than emotion as we have discussed before. The moods are much less intense because the physiology is not there. The physiological component is a single component process and so the physiology is not there and so it is more or less or very less intense than emotions. Whereas, consumers may be aware of their emotions, they are much less conscious of their moods and the effect moods have on the marketplace. So, generally con the consumers are very sure of what role does the emotion have on the marketplace, but they have very less idea that mood also has an effect on marketplace. So, let us look at what are the effects of mood into the marketplace, what role does mood play into the marketplace. So, different mood states have different kind of effects. Consumer recall of marketing stimuli, consumers recall of marketing stimuli, marketplace stimuli. So, positive mood when set in helps people to elaborate upon the marketing information and encode better marketing stimuli into the memory and this same positive mood actually helps them in recalling a particular stimuli seen into the market. So, this positive mood has this effect. Consumers evaluation of marketplace stimuli, think of going into a store which has very positive mood influencing effect, which is very positive to you, which has good lighting, good sound, good slow music play, play, playing. So, these kind of effects leads you to have a positive attitude toward the marketplace and the marketing stimuli. Consumers behavior in relation to the marketplace stimuli, when you have these positive moods that creates a calmness in you and so your behavior is certainly positive. The chances of buying a certain thing increases and so positive mood actually increases the chances of consumer uh, buying certain things, positive behavior, uh, more successful behavior in the marketplace. On the other hand, negative mood actually decreases it in certain way. Consumer variety seeking, more positive mood that is set into the marketplace, the more consumer looks for variety. The better the marketplace, the better the mood of the marketplace in terms of its aesthetics, in terms of the music which is being played, in terms of the kind of people that is there, in terms of the whole situational as well as the environmental phase. Also, within the, uh, within the consumer also, the more positive he feels, the more he will think about seeing variety or searching for variety. And the shopping behavior, the better the mood, the higher the shopping. Simple relation, the more positive the mood, the higher the shopping, the more negative the mood, the lesser the shopping. So, these are the effects of positive mood has or negative mood has on consumer behavior. And what are the causes? The causes, moods can be influenced through service encounters. For example, the person who is interacting with you, if he is very pleasant, if he is very decent, if he is very conducive, then it generates a positive mood. The point of purchase stimuli, what kind of stimuli uh, is at the point of purchase? The more shiny it is, the better music it there is, the better environment, the better smell, the better touch, feel, all those kind of stimuli, all those kind of point of sale stimuli that there are, the better the, it creates the mood. And communication, what kind of communication is there? The better the transactions that is given to you, the better the uh, feeling of oneness or uh, the feeling of being personal is given to you into the marketplace, the better you feel about it and so that leads to positive moods which in its effects has these kind of effects on to consumer behavior. So, inducing positive states, marketers have several opportunities to induce the positive mood states in the consumer. What are these opportunities? Service encounters. Now, we have discussed this, we have discussed the service encounters, we have discussed the point of purchase contact and we have discussed the marketing communication. So, in terms of advertisements, you can give, you can say something good, you can show something good and that can create a good mood. At the point of purchase, the person who is interacting should be good and in terms of service encounters, for example, more number of uh, payment ties, more easy transactions and those kind of factors will also change the mood of the consumer 
or basically lead to better way of transacting or uh, leads to better buying into the marketplace. So, involvement is another factor beside mood which decides the behavior of consumer or the interaction of consumer into the marketplace and what is involvement? Involvement is how much interested the consumer is in the product, how much does he do to understand the product, how involved he is, how much interaction he is doing with the product, how much time and effort, risk is taking, effort is doing to know about the product that is called involvement. So, basically this involvement is of two types we have something called situational involvement and we have something called enduring involvement and so what is the difference between the situational involvement and the enduring involvement. So, basically involvement is a heightened state of awareness that motivates the consumer to seek out attend to and think about product information prior to purchase this is that state this is that excited state which most motivated consumers have which forces you to get information about the product to interact with the product in the right way to think about the product to attend to information which is related about a product to get one with the product that kind of a factor that kind of a motivation is what is called involvement. Now, this involvement generally is of two types situational involvement is specific to a product for example, if you are interested in mobile phones or there is a sale and there you show the involvement this is called situational involvement. You are a company which is marketing marriage related products and so red posha is something which is liked by people who are going to the honeymoons this is called situational involvement. On the other end you have something called so this situational involvement is temporary and it for a product or situation when it is for a specific period of time this is called situational involvement and then there is something called enduring involvement. So, somebody who has great interest in car who has a habit of riding cars for him the red Porsche is no more situational involvement for a honeymoon going person a situational involvement is the red Porsche, but for a person who is involved in cars who is a mechanic who is a enthusiast of a car for him the red Porsche is more of uh, more or less like a uh, enduring involvement. So, because this honeymoon user will use this or will interact with the car for a specific period of time and it is temporary the involvement will be temporary once used he will throw it away, but the person who is actually an uh, enthusiast of car who li likes the car who wants to use the car or who gets uh, uh, influenced by the car excited by the car he has enduring involvement. So, enduring involvement reflects feelings experience towards a product category that are persistent over time it does not change over time and across different situations. So, one of the things that the marketer can do is provide information into the marketplace, so that the consumer becomes involved with it and the more the consumer is involved with a particular product the higher the chances of him buying of him converting his alternative valuations into final purchases and then repeated purchases that is what the aim is. So, that kind of a fact is there. So, effects of consumer involvement involvements are of two type one is situational the other is enduring there are several factors which affect involvement a number of factors cause people to involve with a product or service and these can be categorized into personal factors product factors and situational factors let us look into that self concept the higher the self concept is the higher your self image is and the more your self image matches the self image or the product the higher the involvement will be needs the higher the need drive is the higher your needs is the more the product involvement will be if you need something very badly you will get highly involved if a need is not that bad it will not be you will not be involved values what is your value system the more deeper your value system is the higher the involvement will be but if the values are less if the meaning of the product for you is less the value for it is less you will have lower involvement. There are certain product related factors also which describe involvement for example, perceived risk the lesser the perceived risk that people see in buying a particular product the higher the involvement the more the perceived risk I am sorry that somebody sees in buying a product the higher the involvement because if you think that a purchase is risky if, if you are buying a car and it is risky and so you will be more involved but if the risk is less then the involvement will be less. So, that is how it is going to be product differentiation the easily you can do product differentiation the lesser the involvement 
the more the product are similar together, the more the involvement because you do not see differences between product. And so for finding differentiation, the if product differentiation is easy, involvement is less, if it is hard, then involvement is more. Hedonic value. So, uh, products and services which has hedonic value have higher involvement than which does not has hedonic value. And product cons conspicuousness, the more conspicuous the product is, the higher the involvement, the less it is, the lower the involvement. Similarly, there are certain situational factors also which describe involvement and so purchase occasion. The kind of occasion that you are making a purchase, if it is a regular purchase, the involvement is less. If you are buying a gift for someone, a jewelry for your wife, the more the involvement, more the money related. Social pressure, the more the social pressure on you, the more the involvement. If you feel that people will evaluate you on your buying, the more involved you will be the, with the product. But if you feel that people have no role to play in on whatsoever, then the involvement is less. Decision imminence. The more imminent a decision, the more the involvement, the more you feel that this decision is important to you, the more immediate a decision has to be taken in, the more the involvement, the lesser imminent. For example, if you uh, the train is, uh, if you are in a train station and a train is leaving, it becomes imminent to take the ticket and in this case the involvement is very high because you have to decide now. But if it is not of this imminence, this, this immediate thing is not there, then the, then the involvement is less. Similarly, decision irrevocability. The more you see that the decision cannot be changed, the more the involvement. Because once a decision has been taken, it cannot be changed. Once you invest in LIC, it is going to be there for 35 years and so the involvement has to be high. But if it is for one year or two year, the decision involvement will be low. So these are the causes which leads to involvement, both situational and during. And these are the effects. Information search. With high involvement people, the information search is very heightened. If you are very highly involved with a product or product class, you will search the information, you will go all out into searching the information, look for places, articles, magazines and so on and so forth. Information processing. If you are very involved, the depth of comprehension will be very high. You will try to understand what the message is saying, what a particular ad is saying, what a particular product information is saying and so comprehension will be high. Extent of elaboration. You will elaborate the message highly. You will pr uh, produce arguments and counter arguments to all the messages that has been given to the particular product. And so elaboration will be very high if you are highly involved. But if you are not involved with the product, this elaboration is going to be very low. And the extent of emotional arousal. If you are very involved with the product, you will have high emotional arousal by seeing the product itself. For example, 1 plus, one plus 6 is coming and I am very involved with that. In that case, I have read everything about it, I have presented arguments and counter arguments of whatever ad is coming in because I am involved with the product and when I see the product, I feel heightened, I feel excited by just looking at the product. I am waiting for the day, which is 21st of May, when it gets into the market and I am going, I'm going to be the first user or one of the first user because that will give me social prestige, that will give me the fulfillment of my need of buying that product and that is how involvement is. An information transmission. The more you are involved, the higher the information transmission. The more I am involved with my product, one plus six, the upcoming phone, the more number of people I go and say about. I increase the word of mouth, I write reviews about it, I tell to more number of people why it is good, where it is good and I am advertising the product. So more involved people have more information transmission or lead to more information transmission. Causes of consumer involvement. So personal factors, we have discussed this, self-concept, a consumer's perception of his or her own personal identity, needs and values. Product factors, perceived risk, perceived differentiation, hedonic values, product conspicuousness and so on and so forth. So we have discussed all this before. And situational factors, also we discussed, so how much social pressure is there, what is the decision imminence and what is the decision irrevocability. So consumer behavior models based on involvement. So we will discuss a couple of consumer behavior models which is based on involvement. The first model is called the low involvement learning model. And so what happens here is that. A low involvement model, in low involvement model, a consumer is not involved at all with a product. And so in this case, the learning is very low. And so if you, somebody wants to in, promote a product which is low involvement, rather than influencing the attitude of, about that particular product, the person, the manufacturer should advertise the use of the product. So do not touch the attitude, how you feel toward the product, rather touch the fact that use the product, promote using. And that way, that can be done by 
using product positioning. So, product positioning associating the product with a particular need in the consumer's frame of reference. For example, soaps, if you want to promote your new soap, do not change the person's attitude towards soap, rather than promote the fact that using your soap will be gentle or rather using your soap, soap has more fragrance and if you that is the fact that you are promoting, people may shift to you because this is a low involvement product. And so, attitudes one form, first of all, if there is no attitude at all, and even if there is, it is not going to change because you have to change the belief system and changing the belief system is very difficult. The next section that we will do, we will look into attitudes. So, where they will explain you what is belief and what is attitude. So, changing those are very difficult. So, instead of promoting attitude change, rather promote what? The use of the product. So, this is the one model of consumer behavior which is based on involvement. Then there is something called a learned field hierarchy model. What the model suggests is high involvement, high thinking, it has four parts into it. We have high involvement, high thinking, high involvement, high feeling, low involvement, low feeling and low involvement, low thinking. This is called the learned field do model. What this model says is that the way you are involved with the product will decide what you learn and will also suggest or will also promote what you do and this model can be explained in this way. So, this model can be explained on two dimensions, any product can increase thinking about it or feeling about it and this thinking and feeling can also be countered or can also be projected on a dimension of high involvement and low involvement. So, if a consumer is highly involved and highly thinking, he is an informative consumer, he is a thinker and basically examples of this is car, house, furnishing, new products and so on and so forth. The model here is learn, feel, do. Learn something about particular product, get more information since it is high thinking and high involvement. So, get first get information, then feel positive about it and then do the act of buying and this is more in, uh, an economic model. And possible implication is test recall diagnostics, media is long copy format, this is how you use and the creative here is specific information. So, have a look at this model, study this model. On the other hand, I can have a high involvement consumer which is focused on feeling rather than on thinking and this kind of consumers are effective or feeler consumers. And so, examples of this is buying jewelries. So, in buying jewelries, you do not have to think too much about it, you have to actually feel about it, you have to feel positive about it. So, buying cosmetics, jewelry, new products, motorcycles, in this cases, this person is highly involved but low on feeling. The model here is feel, learn and do. First feel, first feel good about something then try to learn something about it and then buy it and that is what it is and so the psychology it is a psychological model. So, these are the possible implications of this model. The third model where a consumer is low involved and high on thinking is habit formation and this type of consumer is called the doer. So, here examples are food and, how, uh, food and household items, here you are not in, at all involved but the thinking is there because you have to think about nutritious food, but you are not involved with what brand you are buying, just buying a nutritious food that kind of a thing. The model here is do, learn and feel, first buy something, then learn a little bit about it and then if, if it is positive, then feel about it, then feel good about it. So, first do something, then learn and so here the consumer is responsive and these are the possible implications and the fourth kind of consumer is low involvement, low, think, low, low thinking or high on feeling. This is the self satisfaction consumer or reactors and products that come under this category are liquors, candies and cigarettes and so here people are not involved at all and neither thinking because they want cigarettes, so they do not want to have a particular brand and neither it is all about feeling because it is feeling which is important to them not the involvement. So, they, uh, they think about particular types of cigarettes, so Marlboro I will drink, I will take or be a certain good kind of beer I will take, that kind of a thing. So, they are, they are product related, so it is not about what beer that they are doing, so involvement is very less, but since it is self satisfaction which is here and so these are social consumers and so here the model is do feel and learn, first do something then feel good about it and then learn anything about it and the possible implications are given here of this model. So, this is the do feel learn model, do feel high, uh, uh, hierarchy of consumer involvement. The third model that we discuss today is called the level of message processing model and so the more involved you are the way different way you will process a message and so there are if processing a message 
about a particular brand or service, there are four stages, a pre-attention stage, a focal attention stage, a comprehension stage and elaboration. The more involved you are, the more stuck you will be to one of these factors. So, if a message comes in, if you are very less involved, at the pre-attention stage, the message will be processed and not processed further. So, sensory buffering and feature analysis, you will just do some feature analysis. If you are more involved, then a channel selection, perceptual and semantic processing is done, focal attention is there and so you process something about it, some kind of, some kind of uh, semantic information about that message if you are more involved. If you are less involved, just process the message that is it and by in terms of features. But if you are more involved, you will have semantic processing. If you are, if you are more involved, a slightly more involved, then bring the message from focal attention to comprehension, here you will do syntactic analysis and so you will now do, uh, you will try to understand the meaning of it, you will try to understand what the message is saying, here the message is just read and registered, here it is registered and some kind of analysis, primary analysis of it is done, for example, uh, okay, this message, this product has these many extensions and so on and so forth, here in a syntactic analysis, the message is understood, meaning is understood and the more involved you are, the more elaboration you will do, this is called conceptual analysis, you will extract the message, you will break it down into its part. For example, let us say people who are using drugs, now or so if you are one of those people who just pop pills, then they will look at the new pill and they just understand that this is for this particular kind of treatment or this kind of disease or this kind of headache. If you are focal attention, then you will come to know that this is a drug and this is some other drug and this can be used for this, this can be used for uh, the other thing and that kind of a thing. At level of comprehension, you will look at the drug type and do more analysis of what this drug has for you, what it is, it, it has an offering for you and uh, where it can be used and what is the way of using it and that kind of a thing, what is the message of the drug is saying, what kind of headaches it is going to take. And if you are doing a conceptual analysis, you will look at the molecules of the drug, what is going to affect, what molecule does what kind of effect and so on and so forth. So, uh, most elaboration, this is highly involved consumer and this is very low involved consumer and between that there are two more types of that. And so, this is how the information processing happens. If a message is sent, this is the level of inv involvement. So, uh, from pre-attention to elaboration uh, uh, consumers and you have sensory buffering to conceptual analysis. And these are the complex representations, the use of existing stored knowledge. So, basically dependent on where you are, you will process the message in a similar way, what type of consumer you are or how much you are involved with you are in a product will define the kind of processing that you are doing with the message. And the last model that we are going to see is called the product versus brand involvement model. So, here again we put consumers or classify consumers in terms of brand involvement and product involvement, how much involved the consumer is of a particular brand and particular product. The more high involvement a person has on a brand as well as on a product, he is called a brand loyalist. If a consumer has high involvement of a brand, but low involvement of the product, he is called a routine brand buyer, because he, he knows the brand, he is buying the brand, so he routinely brands because, uh, buys a product because that satisfies him, no product in, involvement at all. But if a consumer has low involvement of a brand and high involvement in times of product, this is called information seeker, this kind of people go into the marketplace and, and seek a lot of information, search a lot of information about products and services. And then if a, if a consumer has low involvement with a brand as well as low involvement of product, he is called a brand switcher and this is the same people, these are the same people who move from one brand to another, move across brands and switches brand. So, these are the three models which are there, we have the learned field do model which can be dependent on how thinking versus feeling you are of a particular product versus how involved and less involved you are. This is the brand versus uh, product involvement that you can show and then we have a low involvement uh, learning model which is out there. So, what we did in this lecture is we looked at what is emotion and how emotion affects consumer processes, consumer decision processes, consumer uh, actions into the marketplace and marketer actions into the marketplace. Beside that, we also looked at moods and what is the role of mood in, in shaping behaviors of consumer into the marketplace and also the marketer. And lastly, we looked at involvement as a factor which shapes 
consumer interactions, consumer processes or uh, consumer market transactions and how this involvement, what role does this involvement has in shaping these transactions or shaping the behavior of the consumer when he is into the actual marketplace. Next lecture, we will look into what is attitude and how does attitude affect consumer behavior and how if attitude is formed about a particular product, how can it be changed. Up till then, it is buy from here.